Let's continue talking about the Hangman script. At the end of the last video, we had appended the user's guess to the list of letters called guessed. So we're keeping track of all the letters that have been guessed. And we were about to retrieve a string called word so far from the function called get word so far, which takes as its parameters the list of guessed letters and the word, the target word. So let's take a look at get word so far. Get word so far is a much shorter method. It takes the list of guessed letters and the target word as its arguments, and it will return a string called guessed string, which is a string representation of the word to be guessed with the letters that have not yet been guessed as blanks. So we start this method by initializing the return string at guessed string as the empty string. And we're going to loop over the letters in the word. So for every letter in the target word, right? So in this string, the target word, if the letter is in the list guessed letters, then we will append that letter to the guest string. If that letter has not been guessed, then we will append a blank to the guest string. And so we're now returning this string, which is comprised of either letters or blanks. Well, it's comprised of both letters and blanks depending on whether or not the letter has been guessed. And that's it. That's all this function does. But this is a function, this is a chunk of code that we are performing so often that it makes sense for readability to separate it out as its own function. So once we know what it does, we can simply read over this line, word so far, is the string returned from get words so far. All right, and then we enter the last part of the play hangman method where we were before. So we return to this call. We have word so far. Here's a case where the word has been completely guessed. That is, if word so far is completely equal to word, then Here's the string printed indicating the user has won. Fine, you won't be so lucky next time. Indicating somebody who's disappointed that the user will not be hanged. Followed by a call to exit. So we are not breaking out of the loop. We are exiting the program entirely. And we are doing so with an exit code of zero to indicate that there is no error, that everything went fine. The user just won the game, that's all. Or the word may not be completely guessed yet, but the letter is in the word. So in Hangman, if the letter is in the word, if the user guesses a letter or the player guesses a letter that is in the word, then we do not lose a guess. So down here, in this case where the letter is not in the word, we are going to decrement the number of guesses. But up here, if the letter is in the word, we're not. So there is no statement, there is no statement to decrement num guesses. We're simply going to print out the word so far in the string dot dot dot. So the word so far will be printed right here. And we already know that word so far is a string of blanks and letters, depending on whether those letters have been guessed. If the guess is not in the word, right, so if this condition does not pass, we will decrement the number of guesses, and we will inform the user 
right here, here is the string so far, which presumably will be the same string returned from their last guess. And in these curly braces, we will input the word, or we will input the value num guesses to indicate how many guesses are left. And again, here in the language, just trying to be cute, so many steps remain to the gallows. So it creates tension. 10 steps remain, nine steps remain, eight steps remain, and so on. It's just a way to indicate to the user that they have so many guesses left to guess the word. And that is the end of the while loop. So if we exit the while loop because the user runs out of guesses, then once again we print this message meant to indicate game over, meant to indicate that someone has died, the hangman has died, and it tells you what the word is that couldn't be guessed. So let's quickly review some of the main takeaways of this script. We saw here the use of a positional parameter and, the, uh, and passing that to a function. And this is uh, the first time that we've talked about this in Python. So sys.argv as a good thing to know. Um, another thing we're talking about for the first time is this option to pass a parameter to a function or not. And that is again accomplished by the use of this equal sign and a value next to a parameter in a function. We made use of strings and lists in this game, and a few points of syntax worth noting. We looked at how this operator in can be used to test very simply whether or not a character is present in a string, and we can also use it to check whether a value is in a list. So in performs a similar function for both strings and lists. We got to see the results of certain functions that can be called on strings. So for example, testing whether a string falls into a certain character class using is alpha. And of course there are others like is digit to make sure you have an entirely numerical string. We saw the use of length, which can be used on both strings and lists. Any data type that has um, smaller data types comprising it, or a sequence of values comprising it, can take length or can be an argument to length. We saw in Word so far that we can loop over strings, and we didn't loop over any lists here, but they could be looped over in the same way. So with the exception of is alpha, which can only be used for strings, a lot of what we have done in here, a lot of the operations we have taken on strings and lists can be done for either one. Append is another exception. Append works for lists. For strings, we would want to use string concatenation. So strings and lists can share a lot of functionality because of the fact that they are both iterable. You're able to iterate over the values, the characters inside of a string, and also the values inside of a list. One big way that strings and lists are different 
is that strings are immutable and lists are mutable. If something is mutable, it can be changed. So we could reset the values stored at the first index of a list at any point, no problem. If we try to reset the value of a string at any point, uh, at any index, we run into a problem. So let's just take a look at that. Here is a list. Oh. <laughs> and of course, you should be in Python before trying that. Let's try that again. And here is the string. We could set the first index of a list to another character, no problem. But we cannot set the first value of a string to another character. So strings are immutable. But lists are mutable. So what does this have to do with our game? You'll notice that we need to get a new string every time the user makes another guess. That is, we need to make another call to get word so far. Notice that get word so far does not at all acknowledge the value that was previously returned from get word so far. So we are returning a new string every time. So in a way, this method exists because of the fact that strings are immutable, that we need to get a new string every time. So as an exercise, you might think about how you might re-implement this code using a list. And specifically, how could you use the same list of letters to represent the word as it has been guessed so far? And how could you update that list as you go along? You wouldn't need to get a new list every time. And it's possible at any time to change that list into a string using the join method. So we can create a string from the values of a list using the join method. Here we're joining on the empty string every value in the list L. So if you were to try to re-implement hangman without using the get word so far method, this might be a part of your code. Try it out. Good luck.